to this moment. We are now projecting, NBC News is projecting, Senator Jacob Javits winning another term in the U.S. Senate. The vote is hardly in yet, but we are projecting Senator Javits, who was, by all odds, a very heavy favorite to win here in the state of New York. He is one of the most formidable vote-getters in the history of this state, indeed in the history of the United States. So we are projecting Senator Jacob Javits over his Democratic opponent, Paul O'Dwyer. Um, even though the votes are not fully in yet, it's a very fully in, they're hardly in, we are still projecting Jacob Javits as the winner in New York. David? NBC News projects Wallace as the winner in Louisiana. The race for president in Louisiana, Wallace, 55%, which is not surprising at all. That was a state that has been pretty much ceded to him from the beginning. Wallace, our projected winner, in Louisiana with 55% of the vote. With uh, three states, now three states in which he is the projected winner, he now has 27 electoral votes. Now, um, we'll be back in a moment. These are the kind of men we had in mind when we designed Humphrey with 39% of the vote, four and a half million. Humphrey trailing, in other words, by about 220,000 votes. And Wallace now with 19% of the vote, a little over two and a quarter million. Uh, the Electoral College Board, Humphrey has now carried six states for 57 electoral votes. Nixon has carried eight for a total of 77. Wallace has carried three for a total of, two, of 27, and 377 are still to be decided. Now, the following states. New Hampshire, 22% of the vote is now in. Nixon continues to maintain his lead in the state of New Hampshire, with 58% of the vote currently. In Maine, 6% of the vote is in, and NBC has projected that Hubert Humphrey will carry the state of Maine. This is a commentary, I should think, on the strength of Ed, Senator Ed Muskie. The Maine's neighbors, New Hampshire, is certainly leaning toward Nixon. Vermont, by NBC projection, has gone for Nixon, but in the state of Maine, safely, apparently, in the column for Humphrey. Finally, in Maryland. 25% of the vote is in. Nixon has a comfortable lead with 47%. Humphrey with 34%. And Wallace showing a strong 18%. Now to Sandra Van Ocker. Yeah, I haven't got it. I'm getting no analysis. We just got word. Uh, as you know, first I'll go to Arkansas. As David Brinkley pointed out a few moments ago, Senator William Fulbright is the projected winner there. What's surprising about this is that a recent Oliver Quayle poll showed Arkansas to be one of the most hawkish states in the country on the Vietnam War, but this didn't seem to bother the voters of Arkansas. As a matter of fact, many of them questioned by a lot of reporters said they rather admired Fulbright for standing up to President Johnson even though they didn't agree with him on the war. Uh, we have another projected winner in the state of uh, Colorado. That is Peter Dominic, the incumbent Republican over former Governor Steve McNichols. Now, you don't see any figures here, and the reason why you don't is that we have uh, selected precincts which have been reported to us, not contained in the raw vote yet, but they are selected precincts, and by looking at those precincts, they have a very accurate idea of how he will carry the state, and we project Peter Dominic to retain his Senate seat, Dominic to retain his Senate seat with 58% of the vote. Now, in the state of Illinois, it's somewhat surprising because William Clark, the Democratic incumbent, whom people didn't give much of a chance, is now leading the, uh, the Democratic um, challenger, is uh, giving a close race to Senator Everett Dirksen. In fact, he's leading him right now. And people didn't give uh, William Clark, who is the Attorney General of the state of uh, Illinois, much of a chance. There's another close race over in Indiana, where the incumbent senator, Birch by the other figures are changing now, uh, is still running, as he has for about the past hour, 10,000 votes behind the majority leader in the House, his Republican opponent, William Ruckelhaus. For about an hour, Birch is by, has been running about 10,000 votes behind, and that is still a very close race. However, only a third of the big city vote is in in Indiana. 
in Ohio, we have a similar situation over there, though the gap is very wide right now between the Attorney General William Saxby, the Republican, and Je Democrat John Gilligan. However, it must be pointed out that only 3%, 3% of Cleveland, that's Cuyahoga County, that vote is only 3% in at this time, and that is usually a very heavily Democratic vote. So we'll have to wait and see how that race turns. In Pennsylvania, there's a similar situation. The incumbent over there, Joe Clark, seeking a third term, is running behind Richard Schweiker, the Republican. However, very little of the Philadelphia or other big city vote is in yet, and Philadelphia really goes Democratic most of the time because you come to the Philadelphia line if you're a Democrat behind, and you hope that the Philadelphia vote will put you over. So we'll have to wait and see what the city vote is in Ohio, Indiana, Illinois, and Pennsylvania. John Chancellor. <clears throat> We've been taking a look at Hubert Humphrey's support among labor members, and in some states it's not good. Uh, in Illinois, uh, which is one we have a chart on, it is interesting to note that the Illinois figure gives 44% of the labor voters in Illinois going to Hubert Humphrey, while Richard Nixon has 32%, and Wallace way down with 24 percent. Now that pick figure of 44 percent in Illinois tallies with what we're picking up in the indications we have from precincts surveyed in other states. In Ohio, where one out of every three voters is a member of a labor union, Humphrey is getting 48 percent of the labor vote. And in Michigan, he is also getting about 48 percent, say half, of the labor vote according to our early tabulations. Well, this is a problem for the Democratic Party because in the 1964 election in Michigan, for example, where Humphrey is now getting one out of every two labor voters, 80% of the labor voters went for Lyndon Johnson against Barry Goldwater. And while everyone expected this year that the nominee of the Democratic Party would not do quite as well, as the nominee in 1964 because the Nixon-Humphrey election is not as volatile as the Goldwater-Johnson election was, the difference is very marked. And so if we can move these figures across the country, we can see that Hubert Humphrey is not doing very well in another traditional safe area for the Democratic Party, the labor vote, at least as of now. Now here's Frank McGee. We still have some very close races among those trying to be governors, Kansas and Indiana among them, but no new figures there that would give us any clue. We do have some new figures in some of the other races that are interesting, in West Virginia, for example. Almost a quarter of the vote has been tallied now, and the Democrat Sprouse is clinging to a lead over a long-time Republican congressman and a very popular man in his district, Arch Moore, who is getting 47 percent. Nixon did not campaign in the state. Humphrey did once, and Sprouse appeared with him. In Arkansas, the Republican governor, Winthrop Rockefeller, seeking a second term, is getting 55 percent of the vote against his opponent, Marion Crank, who's getting 45 percent. This, however, with only 3 percent of the vote counted. Prison reform has been one of the big issues there. Now let's look at Illinois, where we have some new figures. 7 percent of the vote tallied. And the Democrat, Samuel Shapiro, an incumbent, he was named to replace, or did replace, Governor Otto Kerner when he became a federal judge, has um, a whopping 61% lead at this point over um, Ogilvy's, Richard Ogilvy's, 39%. Now, in Illinois, well, in many of these states, actually, the contest for governor doesn't uh, seem to bear much relevance to the national issues, since governors can't do much about national policy. Uh, the war in Vietnam, for example. Uh, and one of the big issues in Illinois has been highway construction, one of the time-worn issues in any race for governor. And uh, Ogilvy has promised that he would uh, build more highways in the southern part of the state and not let so much of the money be concentrated around Chicago and Cook County. We'll be back in just a moment. Let's look first at Minnesota. Vice President Humphrey's home state. In Minnesota, we have almost no votes on the board, but our precincts have reported in directly to our studio, and so we have projected Humphrey the winner of his own state with 56%, 56% of the popular vote, and it's 10 electoral votes. Rhode Island, even though we don't have any numbers on the board yet, we do have our precincts in, and they show, uh, they on that basis, we have projected Humphrey the winner in Rhode Island with 65% of the vote and four electoral votes in New Hampshire. In New Hampshire, we have 22% of the vote in, and it was somewhat closer, so it took a few minutes. 
It's now, it is, uh, we have now projected Nixon to be the winner in New Hampshire with 55% of the vote. In Illinois, 11% is in. Humphrey has a lead at the moment, 56% to 35. It is as yet too close to project any winner there. In Ohio, Humphrey has taken the lead in Ohio. Humphrey has taken the lead in Ohio. 46 percent, 43 for Nixon, 11 for Wallace. In Georgia, 19 percent is in. Hum Humphrey is, uh, is second there. Wallace is in the lead with 48 percent of the vote. Humphrey is second and Nixon third. In Virginia, 25 percent in. Some time ago, we, had, we projected Nixon, the winner in Virginia, with 44 percent of the vote. Chet? This is an interesting item. A New York assemblyman who was to have been up for re-election today instead received a new heart from the transplant team of Dr. Denton Cooley in St. Luke's Hospital, Houston. Sidney Leibowitz, who was forced to withdraw on his bed for a third term because of ill health, received the heart of a 15-year-old youth who was injured fatally when his motorbike collided with a trailer truck yesterday. Leibowitz, whose second term as assemblyman ends this coming December 31st, arrived in Houston on September 15th, hoping for a transplant. Now, to Ed Newman. Uh, the House races suffer, or perhaps I should say the House race reporter suffers from the fact that the names in the House are not so well known as, obviously, those of the presidential and vice presidential candidates or the candidates for the Senate. But still, a number of national figures have been re-elected already, and we ought to tell you who they are. Mendel Rivers of South Carolina, chairman of the Armed Services Committee. Leslie Ahrens of Illinois, major, uh, the minority whip in the House. Uh, William Pogue of Texas, chairman of the Agriculture Committee. George Mahon of Texas, chairman of Appropriations. Frank Bowe, Republican of Ohio, re ranking Republican member on Appropriations. Wright Patman of Texas, chairman of Banking and Currency. William Widnall of New Jersey, ranking Republican member, Banking and Currency. Carl Perkins of Kentucky, Chairman, Education and Labor. William Ayers of Ohio, ranking Republican on that committee. Thomas Morgan, Chairman of the uh, Pennsylvania, Chairman of the Foreign Affairs Committee. William Dawson of Illinois, Chairman of Government Operations Committee, veteran Negro member of the House. Florence Dwyer, Republican of uh, New Jersey, one of the best known women in the House. Lenore Sullivan, Democrat of uh, Missouri, another of the best-known women in the House. Harley Staggers of West Virginia, Chairman of uh, Interstate and Foreign Commerce. Edward Garmatz of Maryland, Chairman Merchant Marine and Fisheries. William Colmer of Mississippi, Chairman of the Rules Committee. Wilbur Mills of Arkansas, Chairman of the Ways and Means Committee. And the man who has more to say about your taxes than anybody else in the country, the President included. Uh, now to Santa Vano. We have just projected the winner in the Pennsylvania senatorial contest, and we project that Congressman Richard Schweiker has defeated Senator Joe Clark in Clark's bid for a third term. One doesn't know really what to say about this race. By the end of September, these two men were in basic agreement on substantive issues. If there was a development late in the campaign, it was over Clark's strong uh, um, enforcement of uh, gun control laws, with Schweiker taking a somewhat different point of view. It was thought that this helped Schweiker with the gun clubs and other people like that. Now, we project him winning with 52% of the vote. Whether this can be construed as a law and order issue, I don't know. But one of the things that's interesting that's happening tonight is this issue of law and order, which many of us thought was even more dominant than Vietnam, uh, is hardly capable of analysis. Take the state of Kentucky, for example, where Catherine Peden, the Democratic um, uh, candidate for the Senate, if we can move over to the Kentucky board for a second, we have projected in Kentucky that Catherine Peden will lose to Marlo Cook, a judge in Louisville, Jefferson County, and Cook stressed his law enforcement record in the state of Florida. Gurney stressed his law enforcement record. He beat Leroy Collins. In Maryland, however, Mac Mathias, Charles Mac Mathias, attacked organized crime, but he said you have to discuss the basic issues underlying it. And so it's a mixed bag. Chet? Let's pick up the uh, popular vote once again with 17% of the vote now in and counted. Nixon still leading with 41%, little over five and a half million votes. Humphrey with 40%, one percentage point behind, and not quite five and a half million votes. 
Wallace has slipped in the last few minutes by one percentage point to 19 percent. Now let's watch these new figures, see if they change substantially. Uh, things remain approximately the same. Now we'll be back in just a minute. Here are returns from more states. Let's look at them quickly. New Jersey. 36% of the vote is now in in New Jersey. Nixon continues to lead with 48%. Humphrey trailing with 43%. More returns from New York. Not even 1% of the vote is in as yet. Nixon with 50%. Humphrey with 44 Entirely, completely inconclusive. Pennsylvania. The vote in Pennsylvania is mounting. 16% of the vote is now in. Nixon leads with 48%. Humphrey with 45%. That one is still close. Colorado. We have a projected winner in Colorado. Six more electoral votes for Nixon. It is our projection that Nixon will carry 50% of the vote in Colorado. South Carolina. 49% of the vote is in. 36% of the vote for Nixon. Wallace second with 34%. Humphrey with 30%. And in Arizona, NBC News projects that Nixon will carry Arizona with 52% of the vote. So add five more electoral votes for Nixon. And that brings us up to date to this moment. <laughs>